19 Nocturne Boulevard. Nocturne Boulevard? Not far. When you hit Howard, hang a right. Howard meets Philip at a weird kind of angle. Then you cross James and Paul. You can't miss Nocturne. It's just past the Ottoman. 19 Nocturne Boulevard. Your address for suspenseful stories of the speculative, strange, and supernatural. Tonight's story is The Thing on the Doorstep, adapted from a story by H.P. Lovecraft. Yes, this is 19 Nocturne Boulevard. Won't you step inside? Did you have any trouble finding it? What do you mean, what kind of a place is it? Why, it's a police station. In the early 20th century. Sometime between the two world wars. Can't you tell? It is true that I sent six bullets through the head of my best friend. And yet I hope to show that I am not his murderer. One more time, and leave out the malarkey. You'll think me mad. We know you're mad, pal. We just want to know why you think you did what you did. Edward and I knew each other since childhood. Perhaps I was his only friend. Hi. Uh, bye. Oh, hello. Oh, she's not waving at you. What? Oh, Dan, hi. We seem to be the only ones who shared the same unusual interests, he more than I, in such subjects as the occult. Come on, Edward, they got a good spread. I don't even know why I come to these things. Better than sitting alone with a book. Besides, the food is free. Goodness. I hope you're not going to eat all of that, miss. You'll blow up like a dirigible. Oh, don't worry about me. I'm a Roman. She didn't sound Italian. I don't know if that's... She meant that she vomits up everything she eats in order that she not gain weight. Oh, I... I say... Do you? Do I what? I am Azanath Waite, and you are... Daniel Upton. Upton. <laughs> and this is my friend, Edward... Edward... Derby. A bit frightening, huh? <laughs> frightening? A tiny snip of a girl like that? She had this way of speaking your name as if she were tasting it. Like she was trying to see if you were something she wanted to take a bite of. Edward couldn't keep his eyes off her. Edward met his wife to be some two years ago. This is all ancient history. You have to understand how it was between them right from the start. It was... It was like some kind of mesmerism. That's what all the fellers say when they wake up and realize what they've married. You need to see what Asenath was. Was? Is she dead? You tell me. They were married quickly, too quickly, by a justice of the peace. Apparently there were some religious issues. Did she marry him for the money? Oh no, no. Her family was well off. She was the only one remaining. <gasps> Hold on. Well, this is interesting. Very interesting. This your signature? Yes, but... This document makes you Edward Derby's legal executor. So you're responsible for discharging his estate? The executorship was a formality. He simply wanted someone who could have him committed. He had himself committed? He must have been nuts. You think I did this for money? That's hardly a sane motive to walk into a crowd of witnesses and shoot someone. So what sane motive did it's you It's not that simple. Enlighten us. I worried that, that Edward was too susceptible, unused to dealing with people, women in particular. Edward. She said yes. A bit hasty, isn't it? Oh, how can it matter? Do you know what it's like to be able to really talk to a woman? Uh, even about unusual topics? It'd help if you could just tell us your blasted story in order. Like when it happened. It would help if I could tell my story at all. We're listening. When I told him what I thought, that she was not right... He got this hangdog look of misery, but 
but he wouldn't change his mind. No one has ever wanted me like this before. You don't know what it's like when she looks at me that way. It's more important, more vital than all of her knowledge, all her money. She needs me. She needs me. He couldn't have been more right, but he had no idea of the implications. He had no idea just what Asenath Waite was. Asenath. That's a biblical name, isn't it? Biblical? Perhaps. Christian? No. What did you think of this wife of his? Were you taken by her as well? No, never. Uh, she never took me once. I, I, I never would have stood for sure, it. Sure, sure, sure. He means, were you ever interested romantically in Asenath Derby? Oh, no. I never had the slightest romantic interest in Asenath. Wait. Let's cut the pussyfooting and get down to it. If you didn't kill your friend for money, and you didn't kill him over his wife, what the devil's left? I never said my motive didn't involve his wife. So there was something between you? Only enmity, officer. Loathing beyond anything you could possibly understand. She needs me. <laughs> something? I'm thirsty. May I have some water? Certainly. Edward's body. What's happening to it? I realize this is difficult for you, Mr. Upton, but I do want to understand. I mean, I mean it should be cremated as soon as possible. Why? Is it contagious? I truly hope not. Edward and Asnath moved into the old Crown and Shield house, along with numerous old books from her family home in Innsmouth. Oh. What? Oh, nothing. Edward didn't like Innsmouth much. Or those servants she brought back with her. So, Edward, was he happy? He was intrigued. Stimulated. She knew so much about all the things we'd merely dabbled in. In the dark mystic arts. <laughs> Did I tell you that when we were children, Edward and I swore that one day he'd be a famous, morbid poet, and I would illustrate his book? A poet? Well, that's a justifiable reason to kill anyone. Let's call the judge. Go on. <sighs> I'm just trying to lay my thoughts in order. I married just after graduation. I don't think anything happened prior to that. Edward was in attendance, but Asnath made some excuse. Ill health, I think. One day, Edward came to me, desperate for someone to talk to. Edward! Come in, come in. My, my wife's made lemonade. Dan, I... would you hear me out and, and tell me if I'm going mad? When was this? I'm not certain. This all happened over the course of several years. More than a year ago? This particular instance? I should think so. Yes, I'm, I'm fairly certain it was around summer before last. So he was already concerned about his mental state at that time? Oh, that? No, no. It, it was... It wasn't at all the same. Not really. Back then, it was still just a figure of speech. She was right. You see, about the, the transfer of personality, she said she, she learned it from her father. He's quite mad, you know, but in his day, there's still something about him. It, it would be fascinating to sort out what he's got trapped in that mind of his, though I shudder to consider spending a single minute more in that old house. You see, she needs my brain. Well, a, a man's brain? Certain of the processes just can't be performed with a woman's mental configuration. Your brain? Yes. Well, don't you see? She uses my body. While she's away, I'm in hers, and it, the difference is staggering. Oh, oh. Your car. Oh, she's come for me. Here he is, my wandering boy. Come along home now. I just knew he'd come here. You're such a dear, dear friend. You and your sweet little wife must come for cards some afternoon. <laughs> Edward couldn't drive. Never learned. He was rather intimidated by machinery. You said your friend wasn't worried about his mental state. But he did believe that his wife was trading bodies with him? You don't understand. The knowledge and beliefs we were laboring under, the books we'd studied, the Necronomicon and such, made a transfer of minds not only plausible, but a fascinating possibility. Trading bodies. 
Can't you see? Once you perfect the transfer of minds across space, you might then be able to explore other eras merely by trading places mentally with someone in a bygone time. She needs me. Uh, perhaps we should end this. No, I have to tell you. Then you'll do what must be done with the body. Edward or the other? Edward's body, of course. It must be cremated as quickly as possible. You haven't convinced me of anything yet. Except that you're very confused. It will make sense. It will. I swear to you. It will. Just a moment. They just telephoned. They're looking up the charts. You'll hear as soon as I do. How long? A couple of days. We might get the postmortem report sooner, though. Really? Dr. Cass is coming back tonight special. Hot to trot to root around for brain tumors. Hmm. Huh. You've told us all the things that didn't make you kill your friend. Now tell us something that did. What if I told you I'd seen it? Seen her take him over? You really want us to believe this dame just slipped in and out of her husband's body like it was a spare pair of slippers? Pull the other one. But it's true. I'm not the only one who saw it. She did it at the party, in front of everybody. She took him over? No, it was this girl. A volunteer from the audience. It all seemed like a hoax at the time. Some sort of play acting, I suppose. But I found out differently. Really? I've never done anything like this before. Silence! Oh. Oh. I must concentrate. Verem upon us, palachus quern. Viri viria, trompones sinaros, elanquia narase. Nulla resus visi, tincenunt comodo, tempus vel, venendia sitam at nisl. What happened? Oh. <laughs> but that was just a put up job between the weight woman and the girl, right? I thought so too. Until my wife brought the girl to tea. I tried to put it out of my mind, but I was looking at myself from the other side of the room. I was looking right across at my own face. It still could have been a hoax. You didn't see her. You wouldn't say that if you'd just seen her face. And Asnath, I would have sworn that was the one woman who simply could not look frightened until I saw that girl behind her eyes. Anyone else think this was more than a jape? My wife saw it happen again, later. She paid a call on the derbies, but the maid said Edward had just gone off in the car. You said derby didn't drive. Precisely. It wasn't Edward, but Asenath. Even worse, my wife said she saw Asenath's face at an upstairs window wearing that hangdog expression of Edward's. When did this happen? I don't remember, but... About that time, Edward was often seen zipping around in her little roadster. So he was a quick study? No, that's just it. It wasn't him. Asnath would drive his body out to places, and then, upon reassuming his rightful place, Edward would have to hire someone to drive him home. Maybe he just got tired. And then that night came, when I got his terrified phone call. It was scratchy and distant, but I could feel Edward's desperation. He'd been found in the woods near Chesensook. Old woods. He was raving. I didn't want to go, you know. I, I told her never to take me there. I, I really did. Mm -hmm. The abomination of abominations. Oh, I, I can't stand it. I, I won't stand it. Sid, I'll kill her. If she ever takes me there again, her... Him, it. A minute before, I was I was locked in the library, and then I was there, where she'd gone with my body. I was still skeptical. I thought perhaps I could help Edward get a divorce. Mental factors were clearly making the arrangement impossible. The drive was interminable. Edward finally drifted. I from Nigroth, come on, come on. Oh, he's coming. 
Edward! Edward, don't! Edward, look at me. Look at me. There's nobody here. There's no one coming. Dan, did you ever meet him? The wild eyes, he glared at me once and now she glares in the same way. He means never to die. He, he knows how to break the link and, and it can flicker on a while even when the body is dead. He? Who? Have you ever seen a manuscript of old Ephraim Waits? Asenath's father? His handwriting. When I saw some hasty notes Asenath jotted, I knew. They say he went mad and Asenath kept him locked in that attic room until he died. But who was it? Who locked in whom? You need to calm down. Calm? It doesn't matter. See, he could... They could take me regardless. Why do you think that they were looking for someone with a fine mind and a weak will, huh? Didn't he make it permanent with her? And she'll do in the end with me. Hold on, Edward. We'll get help. His voice just shut off like a light when you turn the switch. Edward! Edward! Good God. Edward! I was worried he was deranged enough to attempt self-destruction. Huh? Edward? Why don't you join me? Even his voice seemed utterly unfamiliar. His accent and pronunciation were subtly changed, though rather disturbingly recalling something I, something I couldn't place. Oh, I hope that you'll forgive my attack back there, Upton. Uh, you know what my nerves have been like, and I guess you can excuse it. I'm enormously grateful, of course, for this lift home. <sighs> <laughs> Are you all right? Please. You also must forget any crazy things I may have been saying about my wife. Overstudy in the mystical wears out the mind and leaves one open to all sorts of fancies. <laughs> oh, you needn't worry. I shall take some rest for a while. Probably be some time before you see me. But you needn't blame Asenath. With every moment, my feeling of an elusive cosmic horror increased until at last I was in a virtual delirium of longing for the end of the drive. Oh, guess you didn't regret. You mightn't be seeing him for a while. Is this why Derby had himself committed? Uh, did he think he was developing a Jekyll and Hyde complex? You still can't believe me. She needs me. It was some time before I saw Edward again. He was around, but avoiding me. Asnath wasn't seen much either, but no one really cared. She disappeared? No, she just didn't leave the house. People saw her at windows and some said... Yes? Some said they went by the house and heard crying. Asnath, mostly. Wife beat her, eh? Uh oh, she wasn't well liked. Besides, sometimes the crying was... might have been. Edward. A month or two later, Edward came to see me. Edward, it's been Asenath so- Asenath left me, Dan. Come in. I was just having tea. We talked it out, and I made her promise to stop preying on me. I have certain occult defenses I never told you about, and she had to give in. She was frightfully angry. Just packed up and walked right out. She has devotees all over her. I needn't worry about her. It was horrible, Dan. She was stealing my body, crowding me out. She couldn't read my mind, but she could tell when I was talking about her and she could stop me. She thought I was helpless, but I got the best of her. You did see it, didn't you? In the car? You must have realized. I was trying to tell you, and then suddenly I was locked in the library again. You must have seen the difference. I... Yes, Edward. Oh, I had to save myself, Dan. Come hollow, Ma, she'd have had me for good. The sacrifice would have clinched it. He was still Edward when he left me. That 
truly reassured me she had given up. And no one reported her missing? She wasn't missing. Edward said she'd left, and that he didn't want her back. This was in early October? As far as I can recall. Edward visited me frequently after that, and, and he seemed to be getting so much better. She's come for me. What was that? I can see you're tiring, Mr. Upton. We should stop. No! Please! There's not much left, and I need to finish. Perhaps some coffee? Sure. Please, tell them. They have to cremate the body. It lingers, you see, until the body is entirely discorporate. Tell them? It lingers. I may be a few minutes. Destroy the body! Otherwise... Otherwise, it can try for another. Huh. I've seen better. Better what? Better tries for insanity. You're not raving enough, buddy. Or are you saving the foaming at the mouth act for the jury? Insanity? I'm not insane. Edward wasn't insane. Not insane. So your friend Edward, who you murdered, checked himself into the nut farm for a little rest. She was coming back. He said he could feel it. He was terrified. And once he signed himself into your care, you just couldn't resist, could you? He was my friend. How did it feel? To pull that trigger and see the blood come. Was it a charge? I was looking right across at my mom. No, 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 it wasn't like that. You can't tell me you got no satisfaction. But, but it was me. I did it. I did it for Edward. You did it. You shot your best friend. And you say you did it for his own good. You go. fell out of his chair. I was helping him up. We found her dentist. Did you find out? About Edward? Uh-huh. They have to wait for the medical examiner to look him over. To blame Asenath. <laughs> Coffee too hot? Hmm. There's still this to be explained. My wife didn't see this, did she? She was still inside when the officers arrived. <sighs> Good. I was telling you of Edward's fits of hysteria. My brain! My brain! God damn it! Tugging from beyond, knocking, climb! That sea devil! Even now, Kamak! Kamak? What? That was his name among the witch cults. Oh, yeah, the goal with a thousand young. A Ken, Ken, she's trying. I might have known even death cannot stop it. It comes and comes, mostly in the night. I had to do it, had to. It'll get me down there in the dark. Help me, Dan. Save me. He was getting worse. But you need to blame Asenath. I even, I even tried to dig up some way to contact Asnath, to beg her to leave him be. But you couldn't reach her. Edward was never specific about where she'd gone. And then... You didn't know what he'd done? Not then. I didn't even wonder. So what finally did it? Uh, there was a phone call from the sanitarium. They said he was better. Calm, lucid. And when I visited... I was looking right across at my mom. It wasn't him. Just as in the car. And when he talked about securing his release, it was just too much. That's when you decided. But the hospital staff said you were perfectly civil. I didn't know what to do about it then. But last night, or is it even still tonight? She's coming. What's that? I... <clears throat> Not getting cold feet now, are you? Cold feet, perhaps, but not my own. So last night, the... The body doesn't need an examination. I shot him. There can't be any doubt. It must be destroyed. Keep to the point, pal. <sighs> All right. All right. Last night, I heard a knock. Edward? Hmm. 
Mm. And we're in... There was something, some premonition, that slowed me from throwing open the door. I thought, perhaps Edward had managed an escape and had come to me for help. I couldn't leave him out there. What did you do with the note? I burned it. But I'll never forget what it said. It's seared in my memory. Dan, go to the sanitarium and kill it. Exterminate it. It isn't Edward Derby anymore. She got me. It's asinine. And she's been dead three months and a half. I lied when I said that she had gone away. I killed her. I had to. It was sudden, but we were alone, and I was in my right body. I saw a candlestick and smashed her head in. I buried her in the further cellar storeroom under some old boxes and cleaned up all the traces. The servants suspected next morning, but they have such secrets that they dare not go to the police. Oh, but God knows what they and the others of the cult will do. What did it say then? Oh, it was definitely from Edward. His handwriting, but, but somehow awkward, as if he were exhausted. It begged me in strongest terms. She needs me. No, she, he will not get me. No one's going to get me. No. No one but us. It must be destroyed. There's an incinerator in the basement for just such contaminated material. Really? If you can convince me. The note and that. The note. It it was Edward. He begged me to kill the thing which had taken his body. His wife. It was never Asnath. I was looking right at mm. Asnath in my eyes. The note. As soon as I realized what it was, I knew Edward must be outside. Then there was a thud. Someone falling, I thought. I opened the door. I opened the door and found it. The thing. The stench. It was like nothing I'd ever encountered before. But you didn't blame the acid. This the body? The dental records show this was Asenath Derby. But she was dead long before she turned up on your stoop. She was not but a skeleton wrapped in Mother Guinea's aspic. The consciousness lingers. It was Edward in her corpse. She was. <sighs> What the devil? You okay? Is he having a fit? Don't know. Go for a doctor. Right then. Mr. Upton? Mr. Upton? Why don't you join me? Mr. Upton? Ah. <gasps> uh. No need to concern yourself, officer. I was deeply affected by the loss of my dear friend, but I'm much recovered now. <laughs> <laughs> Got that body for you, Dr. Castle. Excellent. Can't wait to get a look at that brain. No, 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 no. Now that you know how to find us, don't be a stranger. We have enough of those already. <laughs> Tonight's episode, The Thing on the Doorstep, was adapted by Julie Hoverson from a story by H.P. Lovecraft. In tonight's story, Dan Upton was Mark Olson. 
Officer Flatbush was Renaud LeBoeuf, and Officer Malone was Danner Hoverson. Edward Derby was Paul Cram. Azanath Derby, nay wait, was Angela Kirby. Dr. Castle was Marshall Latham, and the attendant was Jean Torkildson. The clerk was Suzanne Dunn. The girl at the party was Gwendolyn Jensen Woodard of Gypsy Audio. And Jean, the mesmerized girl, was Julie Hoverson. Music for this episode was from the first album of music from the H.P. Lovecraft Literary Podcast at hppodcraft.com and is used herein with permission. Cover art by Brett Coolstock. Sound and mastering was done by Julie Hoverson. Sound effects were found on soundsnap.com, onesoundfx.com, and sonomic.com. The opening theme was by Kevin McLeod at Incompetech.com. The opening credits featured Cole Hornaday, Renaud LaBeouf, and Julie Hoverson. All persons, places, and events in this story were fictitious or used in a fictitious manner and are not meant to reflect any persons, places, or things, living, dead, or undead. Questions? Comments? We would love to hear from you. Contact us at 19nocturne at live.com, that's 19nocturne, or check out our website at www.19nocturneboulevard.com. This presentation is copyright 2011 to Julie Hoverson and Reality Productions, and is released under a Creative Commons non-commercial license. Spread the show around, but don't try to make money off it. One more time, and leave out the Lamont Malar- uh, blah, 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 One more time, yeah. That's a Gaelic term. <laughs> That's a Gaelic term. La Blarney. <laughs> ah, the joys of Iowa motorcycles on a Sunday afternoon. Stay angry, my Irish brother. Stay angry. <clears throat> you really want us to believe the esteem just slipped in and out of her husband's body like an old condom. Right! Pull the other one, you bitch! Sorry. You wanted Irish, not leprechaun, right? <laughs> okay. Azanath? Oh, sorry. I don't even know my own name. Do I get a Scooby snack and a pat on the head? Okay, take two. What do you want to say? I never knew I could be so creepy.